Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quadratic equation in two variables for integers. So we're looking for integer solutions and the equation we have is 2x squared minus 7xy plus 3y squared equals 7. I'll be presenting two solutions. So in that sense, this is considered a Diophantin equation because we're looking for integer solutions, not just real solutions. Obviously, there are infinitely many real solutions, but are there infinitely many integer solutions? Let's go ahead and find out. Let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to uh, turn this into a full quadratic and then use the quadratic formula. Obviously, there are two variables, so we kind of have to work with them. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. And then we're going to treat this as a quadratic. We can do it in two ways, either as a quadratic in y or as a quadratic in x. Doesn't matter. But this time, since I have my uh, first term as 2x squared, I'm going to treat it as a quadratic in x. Make sense? So these are going to be my variables. And in that sense, everything else will be considered a constant. OK, great. So we can kind of write it this way, make, which makes a little bit more sense. So you can see the coefficients better. So this is the full quadratic. My variable, main, main variable, actually, I messed up. It's supposed to be the other way around. Here, y and x should be switched. So it's kind of like this. And then let me go ahead and write these in uh, different color. So let's go ahead and use this one. So we have x squared and x. OK, so this is quadratic in x. So 2 is the coefficient of x squared, negative 7y is the coefficient of x, and 3y squared minus 7 is our constant. So in that sense, it kind of looks like x squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Make sense? And we're going to use the quadratic formula because I don't think you want to factor this. I don't, think it, I don't even think it's factorable in this form. Maybe it is, but I don't know how to do that. So I'm going to do the following. Use the quadratic formula to solve for x. It's going to give me negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. Great. That's the quadratic formula and all over 2 times a, which is 4. Now let's go ahead and simplify underneath the radical. That's the discriminant. 49y squared. So this is going to be like this. Negative 8 multiplied by this. And then we have the 49y squared. Make sense? So this is going to be 49y squared minus 24y squared. So that's going to give me 25y squared uh, plus 56. Awesome. And that's going to be divided by 4. Cool. Now, what am I going to do? I have something under the radical. And I know that x and y have to be integers. So the expression inside the radical must be an integer. And not just an integer, but it also needs to be a perfect square. Because if I end up with an irrational number, then x doesn't become an integer, even if y is an integer. Make sense? So we do want this expression to be a perfect square. In other words, 25y squared plus 56 must be something like z squared. OK, let's just use z, x, y, z. Make sense? Now, from here, we, we're going to get another equation, which can be solved easily. If you subtract 25y squared, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get the difference of two squares on the left-hand side, and this is easily solvable. Factor it as z plus 5y and z minus 5y. So you're basically going to be looking at factors of 56. And since we're looking for positive and negative solutions, we're going to consider all the cases. Make sense? OK, great. So now uh, think about it this way. Uh, this can be 56 and this can be 1. I'm going to start with the larger one first. One thing to keep in mind is if you add these up and divide by 2, you get the value of z, right? But uh, the sum of these two numbers is odd. So we're going to eliminate those. And then there's another thing. When you subtract these equations, you get 10y. So the difference of these must also be a multiple of 10. Make sense? There's not going to be that many that satisfy. Let's go ahead and see. Let's use 28 and 2. Their sum is even. That's good. How about the difference? If you look at their difference, it's not a multiple of um, 10. What I mean by that is if you subtract z plus 5y and z minus 5y, 
that gives you 10y. So 28 minus 2 must be 10y, but that's not the case. Great. That's also eliminated. How about 14 and 4? Their sum is even. Their difference is a multiple of 10, so it works. Great. Let's go ahead and pick the good ones first. And the next one, I think, is going to be 8 and 7. And then if you look at this, again, their sum is not even, so it's, gonna, it's not going to work. In other words, uh, either both factors must be odd or both must be even. But 56 doesn't have two odd factors, so we basically need to pick even times even. Make sense? Okay, the next one is probably going to be after this. It's going to be 8 and 7. That's not going to work. And then we're going to have 4 and 14. If you look at that, that's going to work because their difference is, again, a multiple of 10. Okay, since 14 and 4 worked, 4 and 14 is also going to work. And then you can look at the negatives. When you look at the negatives, negative 56 and negative 1, obviously this is not going to work. And then when you look at negative 28 and negative 2, this is not going to work either because if you subtract them, their difference is not a multiple of 10. And if you look at negative 14 and negative 4, their difference is a multiple of 10 and their sum is even. So this should also work. As you can see, 4 and 14 in every form and shape, it works. And then we should be looking at 8 and 7, negative 8 and negative 7, but that's not going to work. And then we uh, come down to negative 4 and negative 14. That should work as well. Make sense? So pretty much all the pairs that work has either 4, uh, plus minus 4, and plus minus 14 in them. So let's go ahead and consider all these cases. So z plus 5y is equal to 14, and z minus 5y is equal to 4. So if you add them up and divide by 2, you're going to get the z value, which is equal to 9. And if you subtract them, 10y is going to give you. We're not interested in z, by the way, but z can be used to find x, right? So the difference is 10y equals 10. From here, we're going to get y equals 1. And then we're going to plug this in and find the x values, okay? And if you look at this equation real carefully, uh, x is going to be... 7y plus minus the square root of t squared, I mean z squared, which is t, divided by 4. So we can find x from here, 7y plus minus t, 7y plus minus t, divided by 4. That's going to give you the x value. And, of course, x needs to be an integer too. For example, if z... Um, I don't know why I keep writing t there. I guess I was planning initially on t and then kept stuck. I got stuck with this. So 7y, 7 plus 16, divided by 4. That's going to give us, uh, let's see, 7 plus 9. That's actually 7 plus 9, 16 divided by 4 is 4. And then if you go with 7 minus 9 over 4, that's not an integer. So x equals 4 is the only acceptable value. And then you can go ahead and look at another pair. Like if x plus, uh, z plus 5y is equal to 4 and z minus 5y is equal to negative, I mean, not negative, is 14. And then you're going to get 9 again for z. But for y, this is going to be a negative 1. And if y is negative 1 and z is 9, let's see what x becomes. 7y, which is negative 7, plus minus 9 over 4. It's going to be negative 7 minus 9 over 4 and negative 7 plus 9 over 4. Again, this is not an integer, and this is going to be negative 4. As you can see, we get a couple different values from every equation, so on and so forth. Let me quickly show you the second approach because the second method is really cool, but does it always work? That's the question, right? Okay, so we have 2x squared minus 7xy plus 3y squared equals 7. And here's what we're going to do for the second method. We're going to try to factor the quadratic on the left-hand side without putting the 7 on the left-hand side. So this is actually factorable, and you can find out if you uh, actually divide both sides by y squared and then call x over y something and look at the discriminant that way. So the discriminant is basically going to be 49 minus 4 times 2 times 3, which is 49 minus 24, which is 25. So that's a perfect square, and that's perfect. So basically the idea is uh, factoring this as, I think, 2x minus y and x minus 3y. That should work, right? And then from here, you're going to be looking at factors of 7 and getting all the solutions from here. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.